Good morning, scholars. Today we're going to continue with the second of the three parts of Achilles' uh, speech, angrily retorting to Agamemnon's threat. So this is Iliad Book 1, lines 158 to 162. Ala soy o meganaides, ham espameth hopra su kairis, ti mena numa arnu menoi, menela oi soy te kunopa, prostro on, ton uti metatrepe ud alegez des, kai de moi gera saltos, a pire ses fly apeles, hoya pet pola magesa, dosan de moi uyasa kayon, u men soy pote wesson echo, geras ho pota kayoi, tro on ek persos, e unai omenon dolia thron. Okay. So Allah soy o meganaides ham hespomet ho fra su kairis. So o meganaides is a vocative uh, expression or a vocative collocation. Um, and anaides, anaides as an adjective means careless of the good opinion of others literally shameless, idos is shame, uh, and anidos means shameless, and uh, lost to all sense of decency. So that's Kunlis' uh, fuller explanation of what this word means, anides. Soy hespometa, this is the second aorist, hepomai is to follow, and you see the sigma that occurs in the in the alternative stems, sep, spe, and that's what we have here in the second aorist. Soy, hespa, met, and um, hama is an adverb meaning along with a person or together with. So ala soy omega anides ham hespa met. Hopra su kairas. So hopra su kairas. Kairas is present subjunctive from Cairo. And again, Kunlif says this is to become or to be glad, to rejoice, i.e., uh, hopra su kairas, i.e., Kunlif says, for your advantage and not for our own, so that you profit. Actually, the word is that you are uh, become glad. Um, so, hopra su kairis, uh, after secondary tenses, the subjunctive may be used in place of the optative, quote, when the purpose or its effect is represented as still continuing in the present. And that's what's going on here. Uh, Achilles is imagining that Agamemnon's delight at having all of Greece follow him to avenge or to win back the wife of his brother, that this good effect is still enduring to the pre present. So Hopra, of course, is purpose, Hopra su kairis. Whereas in narrative of past events, the subjunctive sets forth a person's previous purpose in the form in which it, in which he or she conceived that purpose. So we have not that here, because this is not a narrative, but this is a speech. So here, this subjunctive just represents that, like I said, Achilles views uh, Agamemnon's delight as enduring to the present. Timen anu menoi menela oi soite ku no ba. Uh, so time, times in this uh, usage, in this appearance, has a sense of compensation or a recompense. Um, and arnumenoi is a present participle from arnumai, which is a deponent verb, i.e. middle 
um, middle voice with active meaning, and it simply means to get or to gain. And here, the present uh, tense expresses both attendant circumstances as well as purpose. So, ti main a numenoi, menala oi soita kunopa, and kunopa is vocative. Um, again, shameless, but literally dog eyed. Uh, kunopa. Prostro on, ton utemeta trepe ud alleges des. So, prostro on, timen a numenoi prostro on. Pros with the genitive here has a sense of at the hands of or from. So, in order to gain recompense from the Trojans, uh, you don't see this very often, pros with the genitive with this meaning, but this is a good example of it to memorize. And this tone here, the genitive plural, um, I guess, I guess it's probably, uh, it's probably neuter actually. Um, these things, ute meta trepe ud alleges des. Remember that um, in Homer, ho he to is usually demonstrative, a demonstrative pronoun and is used substantively or adjectivally. So, and of these things, you do not take care, etc., etc. As we see here, ute, not at all. Metaprepe is from metaprepomai, to trouble oneself about with the genitive, so that's the tone. And likewise, alegizdo, to take care of or to take thought of, and usually that is accompanied by u, so that's ud. Um, so, prostreon, ton, ute, metatrepe, ud, alegizdes. Kaide, moi, gera salto, sa paire, sestaya beles. So, kaide here, in Homer, Connective kaide usually corresponds to a later kaide kai. Um, I don't think it does here. Uh, and introduces something similar in kind to what has preceded, but stronger in degree and marks a kind of cl climax. So that's really what it's doing here. It's uh, talking about, it's, it's referring or building upon something that's already preceded. Kaide, kaide. And on top of that, moi gera saltos. Apare sestai apeles. So apare sestai is a future infinitive from apo o, which means to take away or to take back. And um, as we see, uh, it's dependent upon apele o to threaten. So apare sestai apeles. And to explain this future infinitive of apare sestai, we quote from Goodwin 136, one, quote, verbs of hoping, expecting, promising, and swearing, and a few others of like meaning, so that would include threatening here, form an intermediate class between those that take the infinitive in indirect discourse and those that which do not. When these refer to a future object, they regularly take the future infinitive in indirect discourse, but they often allow the aorist and even present infinitive not in indirect discourse, like verbs of wishing and such. So here, this appearance of the future infinitive uh, just emphasizes the fact that what Agamemnon is threatening, he's threatening to do something in the future. It refers to the future of what he's threatening to do. Um, of course, anything you threaten to do is automatically refers to the future. So this is probably par excellence. Um, but also the same can be said of verbs of hoping, expecting, promising, swearing. They all point to the, point to the future 
but you back them up or uh, amplify that pointing with the uh, future par future infinitive. So, kai de moi geras autos apai resas thai apeles. And of course, the autos, you know, you yourself, you yourself, you threaten to, that you'll come and take away. Hoi epipola mogesa dosan de moi huyasa kaion. Now, uh, this phenomenon of anastrope, you have to look at the accent of the second word here, epe. Usually, epe, the, the preposition would have the accent on the second syllable, but anastrope uh, occurs in the case of an oxytone preposition of two syllables, that is, oxytone having its accent on the last syllable, which throw back the accent to the first syllable. So here, it throws back the accent to the first syllable, and that points to the fact that it actually has its object, the word preceding it. So, hoi epe. And mogeo and mogesa is, means to suffer toil, hardship, labor. So, e, hoi epe pola mogesa. Now, again, so this hoi epe denotes cause, and the dative with verbs of emotion expresses the occasion, external cause, or the motive, internal cause. So the example here from Thucydides, confident by reason of his good fortune, te tu que el pisas, te tu que el pisas, but some verbs of emotion take epe with the, with the dative to denote the cause. So always mega fronein to plume oneself, and often kai rain rejoice, lu pes thy grieve, aganakdein to be vexed, and i spoonestai to be ashamed. These will take epe plus the dative. So here we have. Mogeo, I trouble myself, I work hard. Epe, hoi epe pola mogesa, um, being employed in this type of construction. Um, u men soi pote wison eko geras hopota kaiwai. Now, wison uh, e on, uh, or isos. If you uh, don't regard the digamma, means equal or par, and it triggers the dative, the soy here. And so the dative, um, dependent on a single word, Smythe 1466 and 1499 elucidate this. So you have the dative occurring um, with verbs meaning to be like, to be unlike to compare to the fit. So um, earlier we had nukte e oikos, um, ho de e e, nukte oi e kos, for Apollo's approach to the camp. He came on like tonight, you know, uh, seeming or being like night. And so you have the date of nukte. So the example here, uh, e, Oikenai tois toyu tois to be like such men, and then um, what befits a poor man? Ti un prepe andre penete. So these datives with verbs meaning to like, to be like, to be unlike, to compare, to befit. And so just as you have these verbs that trigger the dative, so too adjectives with the same types of meaning as these verbs tr trigger the dative. So as it says here at 14.99, adjectives, adverbs, and substantives of kindred meaning with the foregoing verbs take the dative to define their meaning. So here, the soy defines the meaning of iso, wison, so equal to you, u men soy pote wison at go geras ho pota kaioi. 
throw on at their souls, at unai amenon tholiathron. So ek per to is to sack, to plunder, or to raid. Et unai amenon means well inhabited, holding a goodly people. So it's the idea of a village that, you know, has some degree of civilization or, you know, is thriving, I guess you'd say. Et unai amenon. And Toliathron is a town site. So almost even more than the village, an actual town site, which might have some very minor defenses. And so uh, we have this, in town site, we have the Pi Tau beginning it. And this is something that you see in Homer, where you can have this words that in Attic and elsewhere would begin just with Tau, actually begin with Pi Tau. So, um, Ptolemos, Ptolis, and here, Doliathron. You can often have to watch out for this, and it's easy enough not to be confused by. So consult uh, Smythe 131 if you want to see the whole phenomenon more clearly. Now, so this whole bit, U men soi pote wisonekon geras ho potai Throw on et persos et unai omenon toliathron. We see that over the first line you have u pota ho pota, not ever, whenever. And so uh, 2410. In temporal sentences of indefinite frequency, the temporal clause with the subjunctive has the subjunctive with on when the principal clause has the present indicative or any other tense of denoting a present customary or repeated action or general truth. Now, um, 2412, an, ke is frequently omitted in Homer and occasionally in lyric and dramatic poetry and in Herodotus. So here we just have uh, ek per sos, which I've marked in green, which is your subjunctive, and um, whenever, the Achaean sack. So this is a temporal clause of indefinite frequency. And um, again, the main clause uh, has the present indicative. So we have here echo um, or any other tense denoting uh, present customary or repeated action. So u men soi pota with son ekon geras. He's saying, you know, it's a repeated action, a general fact that umen soi pota wison eko geras. And when is that? Ho pota kaioi tro on ek perso se. Subjunctive of repeated but indefinite frequency. E u naiomenon toliathron. Okay. So, again. Ala soi o meganai death. Ham has bomet, hopra su kaires. Timain a numenoi, menela oi soi te kuno pa. Pros tro on. Ton ute meta prepe, ud alegis des. Kai de moi geras autos, a pai reses taia peles. Hoi epepola magesa. Do san de moi, we es a kayon. U men soi pote wison eko geras ho pota kayoi. Throw on ek perisos e unai omenon toliathron. Okay, so there you have it. Um, we'll can come back to you soon with the third part of this speech and uh, then just produce a video where the whole thing is read so you can experience it as a whole. Okay, keep working hard, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.